Hey guys, welcome back. So at this point I have uh, pulled the motor, I've taken it all apart, uh, disassembled it, and um, took the engine block to the machine shop. So it's there right now. So what I'm doing in the meantime is uh, taking out, or taking apart these uh, pistons and rods. Uh, so the original pistons had press-in um, wrist pins on them. So they're kind of a pain in the ass to get out of there. I've left one uh undone so i could show you the steps i took uh, i'm sure there's some better ways out there to do it but uh we'll just kind of run through that so first um let's see uh i took out the bearings so and i actually labeled them because if some of these are good enough to reuse um we might do that i did order new ones so i, I chances are i'm not going to reuse these but it 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 um, it's never a bad idea just to label everything along the way to make sure you're doing it correctly. So grab a rag out of here and a marker. And it's kind of hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time, but uh, just gonna wipe that off. Okay, so I've pulled out the top half of the bearing and it has a very very slight 45 little angle cut off on that and that indicates that it's the back of the bearing um, at least according to the uh, order in which I pulled it out because this here indicates that it's the front of the rod a little notch that slings the oil up there and the F for front so Given that this is the front of the piston and rod, the little notch on the bearing indicates that that is the back. So that's just something to take into account when you reassemble it. Um, chances are you're probably not going to reuse your bearings. I did order new ones, but I'm going to label this. This is number four, as I put on the rod. I'm going to put four and T for top. So it is important to remember which one was the top and which one was the bottom. If you're not um, planning on reusing your bearings, you could probably skip this step, but uh, even if you don't plan on reusing them, which I'm not, it's a good idea just to label everything as you go because sometimes you wind up having to reuse some parts. So there's, so let's go four. And bottom, I'm sorry, it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. And I'll just set those right there. Just like that, so it's all organized. Close this up. Okay, so now uh, that's been removed out of there. I'm actually going to just screw these in all the way so that it's not moving around and causing damage while I'm working on getting that wrist pin pulled out. Um, and these models do vary. Some of them do just have pins. The replacement uh, pistons I got uh, just have ring clips in there and it makes it much, much easier for the installation when we do that. Uh, but this is going to be, or was, as I did all these, a pain in the ass to get out. And we do have to be careful about it. Okay, so. Um, I have this wood block and if you have a vise and something to press your pin out it's going to be a better way to go. I don't and I should um, having a shop which I'm going to go pick up a vise this week but um, if you had a vise you could uh, put this little piece that I'm going to be used to driving drive my wrist pin on there and have something on this side to uh, shroud that so when you press it with your vise, it just pushes it out one end. And then you're not gonna cause any other kind of damage. Um, what I wanna do, I'm, I do have to hammer this in. It's gonna be tough because it's right on the edge there. So this is all I have to catch that edge of the wood. And it tends to pop off and stuff, but um, it does work as I've gotten with the other ones. Um, and you got to make sure this diameter is slightly smaller than that one so that when you come through you're not going to uh, damage your rod. Um, and this definitely, I, this 
I wouldn't recommend this as your first first choice or method of doing so, but um, maybe if you're in the same situation where you don't have a vise to work with that will work properly and you have to hammer it out, this is a good way to go. Make sure when you, if you are hammering this that you are not laying your rod on the wood like such because when you're hammering that, it's uh, transferring that blow into your rod and could potentially bend it or damage it. So by setting the piston on the block and tapping that through, it's actually transferring um, that force into the piston itself that I'm not going to reuse. So I'm not as worried about damaging this. Um, so it's just making sure you're keeping your rod um, protected. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let me see if I can set this up so you can watch as I attempt to pull this off. work okay and it's gonna be loud and it and these uh, pressed in pins do take some time and some force so uh, just gotta be patient I'm just gonna keep my foot here to keep it in place and it's gonna move around a little I'm gonna have to reset a few times but uh, let's get started You can see it is starting to move, so that's good. So I'm just catched up or caught on the end there. Make sure my footing's good. Okay. Cool. All right, you can see there it's moving getting in there deeper and uh, when I get down to that point once I'm through the uh, piston and coming to the rod um, just got to make sure that I'm not going to be hitting the edges of this um, in this case the pistons I got um, have oversized wrist pins which means I'm going to be machining this the rod to match so um, if I get a little scratch or something I'm not quite as concerned but even with that in mind, less damage is always better, and no damage is best. And it is like you barely have an edge to catch on the wood there, which is tough. So um, I did find it easier to kind of turn that to give uh, more register on the wood from the piston. And there's Leah here to help. Watch out to get out of here. Okay. So I am through one side. And so far so good. So I'm just gonna keep on driving it that same way. Keep weight on that rod. Okay, we're almost through the rod, we're almost there. And there it is. Okay, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I can see, uh, yeah. No marks on the inside, so we did get through that uh, nice and clean, that's good. But uh, if you don't have a vise, that is one way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try and clean up some of this and wire brush it a little bit. Be careful not to get a wire brush inside of, if you are using one inside of these edges because that can damage them. So uh, if you do clean it, just make sure you kind of just stay to the outside edges. Okay, so that was the uh, last one of all eight. Got nice and cleaned up. I might uh, might do a little bit of wire brushing here just with a, um, a piece off the drill. But um, 
Make sure you keep everything organized. I did keep each piston with each rod just so I could go back and inspect them later or for any reason. Um, I just like to keep it organized. Hard to see, but I did put the numbers on the pistons as well. But make sure you put these numbers on them as you take them out. Um, I do have this box labeled front and there's the top of the motor because um, one thing I realized because I flipped over the motor to pull these out um, was that the motor was upside down when I was setting these on here they were actually winding up on the other sides and I you know I just transferred them but um, it is good to remember that as you take them off the motor and put them on here make sure if the motor's upside down you're setting them upside down here as well and that you remember that because you could go back in and put them back in and wind up putting your rods on the wrong side so it's good to stay with the same cylinders that they came out of cool thanks for watching and uh, I'll keep you updated as we go